Hey guys, welcome back to Sound of Drop Fall into Poison with Blue Shifting. Holy cow, um, we are clenched and uh, puckered up at this point because it's getting pretty real here. We're talking visions of long missing girls and uh, leaving Hamino, who's like my fave character, in the dust. So now we're going to see what the heck's going to happen. So, there we go once again. <sighs> okay. My nose has begun to go numb, and thanks to that, I'm somehow able to retain my sanity. Oh, great. That's what we're clinging to, then. <laughs> Before long, I find a dim emergency light behind one of the tanks and head towards it as if it were the last hope I could cling to. Oh. I feel squishing several times beneath my feet, but I try to ignore it and move on. As I move towards the emergency light, it seems the smell is becoming faint. Oh, thank goodness. Hmm? I get used to the scattered shards of glass and the rotten fish corpses just before I reach the door. The tip of my shoe feels as if it's kicked something hard, something different from before. Wondering what I kicked, I casually look down. Oh no. 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 Oh gosh. I get the sensation that all the blood has stopped flowing through me and that my heart has stopped completely. No. Oh, don't, no. The round thing I kicked has... Patches of hair, two eyes, a nose with a bone to it, and a mouth. Altogether, it's... Ah! No human face! Not a human face! Oh gosh! Oh gosh! No! That's not... Okay, please, don't be Humino. Don't be Humino. Speaking accurately, it is the head rather than the face. It's completely lifeless and rolls away with a flopping sound when my foot touches it. Seeing the state of the head is in, I begin to feel ill again, despite having finally calmed down before. No, oh, no. We're not calm. Calm is gone. Calm has gone away. Of the white cranium, only the forehead area seems to be exposed. It seems this is new and has only just begun to decay. Oh gosh. No. For starters... There's no way a human head should be rolling around here. It's my imagination. Or it has to be from some model. I haven't yet looked in the direction it was rolling. Convincing myself that it isn't a human head. It really is different. So there was no satisfying myself. I place my hands on the door and attempt to escape. Unable to control my shaking hands, it takes three tries before I can open the door. It's a heavy fire door. That is usually open. Oh gosh. Still though, I wish he'd have confirmed it. I mean, if it is a head, there's big, big problems. Big, big problems. This is... I step inside with my thoughts racing and the atmosphere changes completely once more. I can hear the sound of the door closing behind me. Inside is a very clean place. The transparent water is, filled, tight, is tinted in faint blues across... Uh, and inside float fantasy-like jellyfish. How do we go from dead head to, like, the coolest exhibit? Oh man, Count countless pillar shapes tanks are spread around and the water shimmers as it reflects the light of the fluorescent lamps, red and yellow, green and purple, the yellowfish bodies diffusing the light like a prism. Yeah, that like even the art right here looks gorgeous, I can imagine. In spite of the strange space I have reached, I'm fascinated by the sh shimmering live art display. I mean, no. I murmur without thinking. Then I quickly shake my head. Erasing the image of Himino's face that appears in my mind earlier. She didn't come for me. After all, Himino chose her own part of the, uh, chose on her own to part ways with me. No, she didn't. You told her to go away. She tried to help you. I'm sure it's because she dislikes me now. It isn't something I should worry about. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Ugh. May you. I am super disappointed in you. Even at a quick glance, I can see that there are various types of jellyfish in the tank. Having made efficient use of the small space, it's a charming area. Its vivid expression ex expresses the starry sky, as is fitting the name for the Matin Aquarium. Compared to the earlier Fish of the World booth, this one isn't the le in the least bit of decay. Oh, thank goodness. We don't want that. I wonder if Marie came this way. Okay. Oh, this is tough. Going back is dangerous. I can't do anything by stopping here. I have to press on, or I feel worried about him all of a sudden. I'll go back. <sighs> Oddly, this is actually making a good case, because 
going back seems like a terrible, terrible idea because whatever happened back there might still be back there. However, I want to go back to Hamino. Crap, what a cracker. How's to do it? Hold on to your butts. I feel worried about Hamino all of a sudden. I'll go back. Upon thinking whether or not this is all right for me to enjoy something so pretty, I reached over the door behind me. Even though we fought, Hamino and I are friends. Sharing such a lovely memory will surely help us make up quickly. Great. Sure. Whatever it takes, crazy lady. I step forward, and at that moment... Huh? When I open the door and step through, there's no Fish of the World booth. Oh, no. Before I can even rationalize the scene before me, I'm pulled in by some sort of swell. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh! Crap, she's drowning. Trying to figure out what's wrong, I realize I'm having trouble getting air. I really want air, so I pause for breath. My mouth fills with a fishy stench, brine, seawater. I know from the salty taste I've swallowed seawater. The reason I can't breathe is because all around me is ocean water. I understand that I'm in the ocean, devoid of light. No light, no sound, in the darkness. Wondering why I move my limbs. At this rate, I will drown. It hasn't been more than a minute since I got pulled into the sea. How many seconds have passed at this point? Crap, did I kill us? No, it, this is, that isn't it. I have to get above water. However, up to this point, there has been no light overhead, and I'm forced in an inevitable battle with my despair. <sighs> I frantically endure my suffocation, swimming higher and higher. Suddenly, being thrown into the water hasn't thrown off my sense of up or down, and the, and the desire to live survives as an instinct to guide me upward. Thank goodness. I still can't see, but I'm alright. Just like that, I seem to have answered my own question. I can feel the clothes I'm wearing being heavy. However, if I have to make time... If I have time to shred my clothes, then I have time to continue upward. My thinking is that alone. I've heard there is high pressure in the deep parts of the ocean that crushes any living thing, but my body is completely fine. That means where I am at the moment shouldn't be that deep. If I swim hard enough, I should make it. I just have to hit the surface and take a deep breath. However, many seconds have passed at this point. I don't have any sense of time whatsoever in this darkness. Even so, I know that some time has passed since I was thrown into the ocean. A minute possibly passed a while ago. Here, my consciousness has begun to fade. Immediately after I see the darkness of death, a small light illuminates the tip of my nose. Oh my gosh. Because I have been swimming so frantically, I haven't noticed, but it seems as though I've gone up quite a ways. I will with all, it, it will all be alright, the surface is close. I reach out my hand, I reach out towards that light. That is all I can do. That's because my legs won't move. Oh no. No matter how frantically I try to move them, my legs won't even quiver. I feel as if something has ensnared them. As the elasticity of the bottomless trampoline, from the tips of my toes to my rear end, the small sensation wraps tightly around me. I want to think that it's a lie. No, I have actually decided it will not believe it. There's a giant octopus that has wrapped itself around my legs. It's gum-like suckers are the size of the small palms of my hand. I can't even imagine how large the entire body is. <sighs> I think I killed us. The light is getting further away. My eyes have already closed. For some reason, Hamino's smiling face floats before me, though it should be her angry face that I've seen last. Just like that, I'm in the darkness. As much as it's tightened up, my legs have lost all feeling. No wonder. My legs are no longer what were they were once. With the deception of my oxygen supply, my brain has already changed into a machine for merely processing my sensation. Within the darkness, it dispassionately communicates my non-existent will with my four limbs, which has lost all sensation. It won't be long before the only thing I can sense is darkness. That's because I've already been part of that darkness. Dang it! I killed her, didn't I? Oh, great. Yeah, into the science of this. Well... That's great. God. This is not gentle game. The sad thing is that doesn't even make sense. Like, that doesn't feel like a satisfying bad end. It's just kind of like, oh, you decided to go back, you idiot, so I'm going to kill you. Which is wonderful. <sighs> well, dang it. Well, I'll see what I can do. I'll get us back to that spot, and then we will continue. All right, everyone, so luckily I have it saved so that when you make a critical decision, which I'm guessing is the red decisions, like, I apparently can go back to it because I'm an idiot, and apparently trying to worry about Hamino will get me killed, which is wonderful. Hope that's not a theme. Anyway, 
So we're not gonna go back. It's dangerous, and we're gonna press on. Going back is dangerous. I can't do anything by stopping here. I have to press on. And so I start towards the starry sky. I gaze in fascination to the right and to the left of me. The circumstances weren't, all, weren't what they are. I would have stopped and stared into each and every tank. The tanks are lined up all together, are beautiful enough, but each one is vivid like the night sky and laid with jewels. All together there are seven tanks. Each one holds a different type of jellyfish, some with poison, some without, categorized by the aspects of such that it's where they live. They really are beautiful. I stop and stand in the very center between the third and fourth tanks. I wonder if this is the last time we came, if these tanks were here. Nakanobi Marie, my little sister. I lean my back against one of the tanks and sit down. Which are, where, whenever Marie's face appears in my mind, I lose all my strength. If anyone saw me, I'd be embarrassed, but here and now in Matin Aquarium, there's no one around. I have a sigh. I heave a sigh and look up at the ceiling. For some reason, a large fan is revolving there. My memories of the last time we visited Matin Aquarium aren't all bad. It was the first time in a long time all four of us had gone out as a family. Marie and I got along really well, and we always held hands as we walked. Oh, it's so adorable. It's so adorable. <laughs> Oh, it's so sad. We would do things like play house and read picture books aloud. Marie was a bit more of a tomboy than I. She was like tiny. How could she have been a tomboy at that point? So even though I was with my older sister. Oh, wait, sorry. So even though I was the older sister, she was the one who gave the orders. Since it was my first time, the two of us sisters went to the aquarium. It was natural for us to be very excited. Just as one would expect, my first time Marie and I laid eyes on the creatures of the sea, we experienced fear, awe, and the sense of being deeply moved. The creatures we saw at the time have stayed with me as vivid memories. Happy memories. I still have plenty of them. But on such a special day of all days, Marie and I ended up fighting. The rest proceeded just as I remember. Since then, my parents buy me anything I want. However, I changed as well, and I didn't really want anything anymore. Greed itself seemed to decline for me, and I never really got excited for anything. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, I mean, it's weird to say this, but depression's real, and it affects a lot of people. And so it makes sense that she would start just losing just, I guess, drive and passion for a lot of stuff. That's why when my mother brought me these book these boot sandals, I was happy. I was fascinated by the nostalgic ultramarine color. Uh, about one year after Marie disappeared, she stopped coming up in conversation. I don't know if my mother and father had accepted it as a tragic accident or if the sadness had slowly faded, but my new normal uh, normal had begun. That seems odd. I had become an only child, but that is nothing more than an excuse I can I can't escape from. Marie. You're here, right? Finally, it seems my strength has returned and I stand up. Even though I asked, no one will come. The thundering ventilation fan in the ceiling is the only sound I can hear. It was almost the same time I stood up. Ah. Ah! A crack appears in the glass of the tank behind me. Since the glass doesn't make any noise when it splits, I realize it's broken when water splashes on my rear end. That's not good. Uh, it's jellyfish. The water continues to flow out, gradually spreading to my feet. The amount of water from the tank is more than just puddles after the heavy downpour. Along with the water flowing, water flowing forth, the jellyfish that had been in the tank until just a moment ago float out. In order to avoid contact with the water already soaking my shandles, I step back from the puddles without looking away. Help! Why? As if to play further with my already bewildered mind, the tank behind me also cracks. Oh, great! No! <laughs> Oh my gosh. No. This time we hear a high pitched noise of glass cracking. Following that, the tanks are each destroyed and turned. Crap. Yeah, no, that's a very predicament. Oh, this is bad. Being stuck in the middle of the passage, water is closing in on me from all sides, leaving me pressed in between. The edge of the water is steadily drawing near me. What should I do? The words that slide from my mouth also float away with the water. The colors of the tank that had once been so vibrant now seem eerie to me. 
Among these jellyfish are poisonous ones. Even worse, some of them are fatal. I'm thinking that, my legs begin shaking in fear. Yeah, and your open-toed sandals! Boots. Proper boots! My kingdom for proper boots! No. But no matter how frightened I become, I know I can't sit down. As if the area as the as if the area I'm in is shrinking, water and jellyfish are both heading toward me, and it's impossible for me to touch the floor. I have no choice but to run straight through, or no, I can I can't think of anything. Hmm. Well, am I gonna kill us again? Because it's like my thought would be you just have to go, or you could wait and maybe see if another option shows up. Oh, fetch. Okay, we're gonna run. I have no choice but to run straight through. I no longer have time for doubt. At a glance, the door to the opposite side is closer than the one I came through. From here, the distance isn't too far in the interior door. Running at top speed should be good enough to reach that one. I hesitate for a moment, then grit my teeth and take off running. It's no more than 10 meters. It's a distance that should pose no trouble, even for someone like me who's tested below average in physical endurance. <laughs> Been there, sister. Crap. I killed us again. Ah, uh, when I run about five meters, I just pass the sixth tank, and I fall, f and fall full force onto my back. The floor is wet, so one might say that should have been expected. No, this is disgusting. The water soaks through my skirt, quickly soaks my underwear. The tank water is in direct contact with my skin on my rear. It's cold and wet and comfortable, but unavoidable. When I put my hand on the floor to try and stand up, I discover the action is a mistake. I've killed us again. Ouch. I squeeze my eyes shut and the pain feels like I've been stabbed through by a cold metal needle. No, it doesn't just feel like it. I've been stabbed by something. Have I been stung by... I lift my line of sight... Shaking, I lift my line of sight straight to my hand. A jellyfish is covering my right hand. At that moment, I get upset and I can't feel the coldness of the water around my right hand. I got stung. What do I do? Someone! The family introducing jellyfish has gotten mixed up with the pieces of glass in the tank. Man of War, I noticed the name without much reaction. Oh no. But it has to be poisonous to be called that. There have been incidents of there have also been incidents of fatalities. Fatalities. Poison. What do I do if I've been stung? Do I clean it? Is it bad that I do, is it bad if I don't clean it? I can feel my pulse quickening. I wonder if it's the poison making its way through me. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? When I try to will myself to calm down, my patience ramps up. Someone, someone help me! Yep, here we go. Trying to use my pulsating right hand for support, I push myself up. I slide in the puddle and can't stand. It hurts. It really hurts. I pull water on the area where I've been stung and attempt to rinse it out. However, the opening of the wound stings and, st and startles me. I need fresh water. Trying to apply pressure to the vein, I tightly grip the area where I've been stung. Dad, Mon, Amino, Marie. I killed her again, dang it. Wanting to be saved, I call as loudly as I can. However, in reality, my voice has already grown hoarse. The corners of my eyes grow hot, and from the fall of individual droplets. No, I... I'm going to die. My voice is no longer really a voice at all. Ah! Before long, an electric shock runs through my right hand, and the subsiding of the of intense pain brings my senses back to me. But my voice will no longer come out, even when I try to think of something. Nothing happens except the sensation of pain whirling inside me that fills me to the brim. Unable to control my body, I fall to the ground, first my head, then my chest. From my stomach to my feet, having fallen on my face, half my body submerged in water. My heartbeat quickens. I become acutely aware of, my, of the flow of my blood. Ugh. Unable to stand it, I vomit. The very idea of being able to endure it no longer occurs to me. Even so, the poison won't be expelled from my body. My entire being succumb, becoming numb and proof that my body has been pump, pump, pumping so quickly it has worn down my veins. <sighs> Wanting to rinse out the remaining vomit in my mouth, I suck in water. It tastes like salt. Without my body, I'm struggling with all I have. The outside of my shell has gone, ex it has long exceeded the limbs of its, uh, the limbs, limits of its stamina. Blood is soaking through the cat, through the capillaries in my eyeballs, and the puddles spreading on the floor are pierced with red. Gradually, I stop feeding, feeling my blood flow. Is it because my heart has stopped, or because my consciousness has disappeared? Either way, my consciousness stops and fades into the darkness. With the same simplicity that the ventilation fans spewed out old air, my breath is evacuated from my body. I am going to find every death in this game, aren't I? Oh my gosh, wait, holy crap! When I come to, I'm still gazing into that cylindri cylindrical tank. Vacantly, I think of nothing other than, I wonder if something's in there. I just stare into the tank. 
I have neither the urge or call, to call out nor the desire to walk away. Neither the sensation of my consciousness alone is floating along the rippled, rippling sea. Why on earth am I here anyway? What have I come here to do? Whether I can't remember or there's just no reason from the beginning. The jellyfish are pretty. Especially this jellyfish. Its color is so bright. Aw, it's a Nino. The voice that starts talking right in front of me catches my attention for some reason. I feel like I've heard it before somewhere. Well, who is it? I am unable to remember clearly, seeing only a wavering face that won't come into focus. Anyway, Mayu, where did she go? Mayu? That girl. She talked like she was looking for someone, poor thing. If she's lost someone here, she probably won't find them. Hmm, wait a second. Where is this to begin with? Swaying, swaying, softly, softly. Drip, drip, the sound of drops resonates all, resonating all around me. Gradually ceasing to care, my consciousness melts into the water. And now did I die? Yeah, yeah, I killed us. Oh my goodness. I am just awful at this. When did I get so bad at this game? Okay. All right. Well, we'll get right back to it. Just give me one second to get right to where we were. And welcome back once again. I have managed to kill us twice in the two instances I think I can die. So we're hitting for the, the fences on this one. So no, in action this time. Can't think of anything. No, I can't think of anything. I'm becoming panicked. If I don't calm down with my thoughts swirling around so frantically, I'm getting even more confused. It's a vicious cycle. My sandals are getting dirty. Oh, this is not the time. It isn't the first thing to occur to me, but regardless, it's my only clear thought. The puddles of water are gradually drying closer, and I can't feel anything anything from the strange jellyfish. I feel my heartbeat speed up as my chest starts to hurt from nervousness. At this point, I have to run through without worrying about my sandals. Though they are sandals, the soles are strong, and as long as jellyfish don't jump, I probably won't get stung. Little by little, the safe spots are disappearing. I tightly pull my legs together, which makes me stagger. Yeah! I let out a small scream and straighten up a bit. With nothing behind me to lean against, I'm just about cornered. I wonder if I die of jellyfish... If I'll, I'll die of jellyfish poison? Rocked by waves of blended nervousness and fear, I, care, I carelessly entertain the, link, the line of thinking. The meter gauge of my fear must be in the full tilt, I think with cool self-deprecation. You, from earlier, huh? Huh? Oh, it's the pedophile. Boy, I'd never think I'd be happy to see him. The sudden yell confuses me. Upon looking in that direction of the voice, I see that the door has been thrown open and a man is standing there. Shoot, why are your feet exposed? Ah, oh, it can't be helped. This is definitely hiyoshi san the man who had called names is now gently removing his shoes and tossing them over to me my mind races to catch them they are thick-soled boots oh thank goodness for the boots guess i have to give up my kingdom now dang it put those on and make your way over here all the jellyfish floating there have deadly poison be careful i take off my sandals and put my feet into his boots just as he tells me to the size doesn't fit at all and they're way too big but not so big i can't walk in them thank goodness I cautiously take a step and confirming it's all right, take my second, then third steps towards him with my sandals in one hand. Thank you very much. You can t you can thank me later. For now, just don't look around, just come toward me. I know my breathing is increasingly rough and I get a little embarrassed. However, knowing some, con con uh, knowing some concessions will have to be made, I walk through the water over the jellyfish. When I step on a jellyfish, I feel the wishing sensation through the shoes and shudder. There are shards of glass in the puddles, and they make me want to think of Yoshi saw thank you Yoshi Shad for being so considerate enough to lend me such strong shoes. I can walk the remaining meter. Yoshi san seems fairly close. Adjusting my breathing, I carefully take the remaining three steps. Ah there is no mistaking. In my carelessness I have overlooked a transparent jellyfish on my feet. Even though I can't see it, I can clearly feel it, and the baggy boots I am wearing throw off my balance. At this rate, I'll end up on my butt. If I fall now, all the help I've received will be for nothing. Watch out! 
However, my body is supported by some strength that pulls me back. Iyoshi-san's hand, right hand has grabbed onto my left wrist. It was a close one. Just like that, I had been pulled from the room with, with the broken tanks. As soon as I was out of danger, Hiyoshi gave me a mighty pull and shut the fire door. Oh my gosh. This is in front of the souvenir stand. More importantly, why are you here? Yoshi-san steadies me against the wall in front of the souvenir stand. The terror from a moment ago hasn't escaped through the heavy, dark gray emergency door. Well, guys, we made it out alive after, you know, three tries. <laughs> I'm really bad at this so far. Anyway, if you liked it, please leave a like and a comment to let me know what I can do better. Please subscribe if you want more weekly content. And, you know, until the next time I see ya, bye!